Sup people, Fairness here, and we are at part 4 of the puppets riffs that you might be playing incorrectly. Sorry that this one got delayed, but I couldn't record that many videos a few weeks back, and I decided to finish Leper first, but yeah, here we are now. Into the middle section of puppets. So let's get right to it. The first is the clean riff that goes before the double solo. Now, there's a tab that, at least when I was learning the song, was one of the first ones to come up in Google search. So I learned that one, and for the longest time, I think thought that this was the correct way to play that. But as most of the tabs that we have seen, see if you can spot the sneaky mistake. So pretty much almost 100% correct, except for one goddamn note, and that is the last note before we start repeating the riff from the first low E. That note should be on the third fret of the E string, so like this. So again, here's the riff, but corrected. we start doing a little harmony that Kirk does with volume sweeps. If you don't know what a volume sweep is, it basically is that you play a note with your guitar volume turned all the way off, and then after you play the note you start raising the volume knob. So you get that effect. This can also be done with a volume pedal, by the way, if you have that. So for wrong tabs on this little part of the harmony, I personally have not seen any, because this is another one of those times where I have never really seen any tabs actually show you how to play this part. You know, I feel like most tabs just show you the clean part, but then skip out on this little harmony entirely. There might be a few tabs out there that show you how to play that, but I guess that I just didn't find any. But yeah, here are the tabs for that harmony. for the double solo. For the taps on this part, it was kind of mixed. I remember back in the day, most taps only showed you how to play James's part of the harmony while entirely skipping Kirk's. But other than that, I feel like most of them got James's part of the harmony correctly. And well, now to show you how it's played. part as you play James you start to play the solo obviously. And now here's Kirk's part of the harmony. Now during James's solo, Kirk does play the clean part. And in the record, it's exactly how we have already learned it. He does change it live, but I'm not gonna cover that here, as I believe there's a lot of channels that have covered that sort of stuff already. Now about James's solo, uh, well, do you guys wanna see the taps for it? As I've said before, taps for solos on my channel don't really do that well, and added to that is the difficulty of writing the taps for them, as you know, it's a lot more time consuming. So if you want to see taps for this one, or if you don't really care about it, let me know in both cases, so that I can decide if I will do the taps for the solo later on or not. But yeah, in the meanwhile, let's move on. So after James's solo, we start with the double solo again. 
but there is a variation in the last repetition of this one. The variation is a hammer on pull off thing that they do, and so it goes like this. Kirks. a little extra thing in the live version they don't do that hammer on pull off thing they just tremolo pick that part so like this and so after that james goes into the same clean riff but instead of playing it you know clean we just simply play it with distortion and some palm muting so people later recording fairness here so i wanted to mention an extra thing about the clean riff in the part that you play distorted so after the double solo <laughs> very specifically on that part that I just played, especially that ending, this one. So one thing that James does on this part, and pay attention to my fingers here, so my left hand, on that part, just when you're about to play it at the last high, this is the G, right? So when you're about to play it at last third fret on that part, he doesn't keep his first finger on the second fret of the third string, but actually almost like kind of like a pull off. And why does he do that? I guess because like if you play these three notes together, it sounds very nice. Like this is basically a power chord, a very high one. But if you left your first finger, then like these two notes together sound good. And these two notes together also sound good. But as you might be able to tell, playing this note and this note together does not sound very pleasing. Like, it's not bad in my opinion, but it's very dissonant. So one thing I would recommend you do, and this is because James does this, again, you can search some live concerts where he does do this, is just take your first finger off as soon as you play that note. So here it's gonna go very slowly. <laughs> And again, to demonstrate, check out what happens when I just leave my finger there. Like, it's very subtle, and it's not only a live thing, by the way. I checked this on the record on the isolated guitars, like I always do. And you can definitely hear this note more so than this one. But yeah, I just wanted to add that little extra thing there. Later recording furnace, out. For Kirk's part, you do have to play power chords with the same notes that I believe the bass plays, so like this. And we're gonna stop part four here with this we covered most of the middle section after this we just have left the master master so that part before the solo then we repeat some riffs we already know and then after the solo we got the cool scale riff still left and after that one i don't think we got any more riffs left and yeah so subscribe for that consider liking the video and also consider sharing it as that's the best way that you can help me out but anyways this has been fairness hope you'll have a great day and i'll see you all next time